when I was 19 years old in 1985 on New Year's Eve. A bunch of my friends and I went to a rooftop bar of a hotel. About a half hour before midnight, I ran down to my car because I had forgotten my camera. I figured I would have plenty of time to get back up there and find my friends. I grabbed my camera and I got into an elevator all by myself. About halfway up, the elevator started shaking and it stopped completely. I was trapped. I have always had a problem with confined spaces, so this was not an ideal situation for me. After a few minutes, everything went silent that was going on outside. Then out of nowhere, the elevator lights went out and I started to hear children laughing, but this was not the type of place where children would be. My heart started beating faster and faster and harder and harder. Then all of a sudden, I passed out. As I woke up, I noticed that I could not move or talk. I thought to myself, not sleep paralysis again. Then the light started to flicker on and off, and then all of a sudden, I see a black figure to the left of me in the corner of the elevator crouching down, smiling at me. I tried to scream, but nothing would come out. I tried to move, but I couldn't. A guy came over the loudspeaker and told me there was an electrical short and that he would have me out soon. There's a camera in the elevator, so to the security guard, it looked like I was just laying there. I guess they figured I was drunk being that it's New Year's. Anyways, every attempt to scream or move, that figure would just start laughing at me and pointing. This whole time, the lights are flickering. Then all of a sudden, I can hear the huge crowds counting down for New Year's. 10. The dark figure is staring at me, and now with a menacing smile, with 10 fingers up. 9. He's still looking at me with 9 fingers up, and he's moving closer. 8. He was still looking at me with 8 fingers up, and he's closer. 7. The same thing. 6. The same thing. 5. The same thing. 4. He's drooling. And he's much closer. Three. He's closer. Two. He was closer. Then the lights quit flickering and it was pitch black. Then all of a sudden, outside went silent again. I felt breathing in my right ear. And then out of nowhere, I hear one. I couldn't breathe. The light started to flicker again. And then a figure was on my chest. And all of a sudden, it was gone and I can talk and move again. Usually when I have sleep paralysis, something bad happens. Once I got out of the elevator an hour later, I found out that there was a brawl during the countdown on the rooftop bar that I was at, and four people were killed by some maniac who was waiting until the end of the countdown to start hacking up people with a machete. Ever since then, I have not had a sleep paralysis episode. I lived in a city in central Ohio that begins with a C and has a big college that I lived near. I attended a different college than the one I mentioned and made the 20 minute drive from the city to that college. I also worked nights as a pizza delivery man in the city and the surrounding suburbs. One night, I had an order in the town where my college is located, which is a smaller suburban city northwest of my home city. Now, this call occurred during what my coworkers and I refer to as the dead hour, which is just before the shop closed at 1 in the morning. I begrudgingly took the pizzas, got in the car, and plugged the address into the GPS. I noticed that the house was located off on a back road in what looked like a sparsely populated area. Not thinking much of this, I drove up Route 315 to I-270 East and exited. After passing through downtown, the cemetery, and the college, I drove through some sub-developments and then onto a smaller road where the house was located. The GPS notified me that I had arrived to my destination, but to my surprise, the house was boarded up. I noticed that there was a small shed in the back of the house that had a small window. There was a flickering light in the window. At this point, almost every red flag had gone off in my head, but I knew my hard-ass boss would be pissed if I wimped out on this delivery, 
so I proceeded towards the shed. As I got closer to the shed, I heard a rustling in the bushes next to the driveway. Then I heard a man whisper, Here they come, Billy. 45, 45. At that point, a man jumped out of the bushes and two other men jumped out of the shed. They were carrying knives and were wearing these long robes and white masks. I made it back to the car just in time, but one of the assailants managed to slip my arm. As I escaped, I could see the assailant standing in the middle of the road looking pissed. I probably drove 90 miles per hour on the way back. When I got to the shop, everyone looked shocked. After explaining everything to them, we contacted the police and dispatched a few officers to the house. When they got there, the assailants were gone. They found some drug paraphernalia in the shed, and some ropes and some weird torture equipment. I was on a road trip with my friend Tom throughout upstate New York. On our second night of driving we were taking some peaceful back road through the woods because we were tired of the noisy highway. So as we were driving down this narrow dilapidated road, Tom suddenly really needed to use the bathroom. I asked him if he could hold it, but he said that if he held it any longer his bladder would explode. So I just sighed and tried to find like a gas station or something. There was nothing to be seen though, so I was thinking about pulling over and letting him piss in the woods, but finally I saw lights cutting through the darkness up ahead. It was a 7-Eleven, thank God. Before I'd even parked the car, Tom flew out the door and raced inside. I realized while waiting in the dark car I was actually hungry, so I pulled out some change from my pocket. It would at least be enough for a bag of crappy Cheetos or something. So then I went inside. As I was walking through the store examining everything on the shelves, I felt a tingly feeling on my neck, like I was being watched. I turned around and saw a bearded man in a yellow suit casually slip into the other aisle. I rolled my eyes, picked up a bag of Cheez-Its, purchased them and walked out back to my car, looking at the dark woods behind the 7-Eleven. Tom had been gone forever, so I texted him and he told me he was just finishing taking a huge shit, which was classic Tom. I was just crunching on my cheese its when I heard somebody go, Psst. Psst. I quickly looked around but saw nobody. Over here. Finally, I spotted a man peeking his head around a tree in the dark woods. His face was all dirty and he had glassy eyes. We stood staring at each other for what seemed like the longest time, until he said, Come over here. I want to show you something. Hell no. I got in my car and locked the doors, texting Tom to hurry the fuck up. I told him there was a creepy weirdo outside the car, and he was all like, All right, be right over. Later on, he walked out the doors and climbed into the car, and I hit the gas to get as far away from that fucking place as possible. As we were driving, I looked back one last time in the rearview mirror and saw three cloaked bulky men standing in the trees surrounding the 7-Eleven. Needless to say, I still have no idea what the hell was going on at that place, nor do I ever want to find out. My name is Yusuf. I'm 21 years old. A few weeks ago, my parents decided to go to Lebanon for a few days while I stayed home. I was happy to have a few days to myself, so I decided to drive to the lake which my family went camping at when I was small. It was remote, surrounded by trees and barely anyone goes there. I decided to stay for one night though. As I got there, I decided to dare myself into skinny dipping since I was alone. To be honest, it was quite refreshing and relaxing. As it was getting dark, I took out some firewood to dry up with a campfire and got my lunch. That night, I dared myself into sleeping naked under my towel as I would never get another chance like this. As I woke up, 
I was shocked. My towel was gone. I couldn't find my clothes either. I felt scared as this meant I wasn't alone in the woods. To my luck, my car keys weren't stolen so I decided to get home. However, since I was staying for one night, I didn't bring any extra clothes. Due to my condition, I had to drive on those barely used roads to avoid any exposure to the public. It was a bumpy ride, but it was worth it. After a few hours, I saw a man in the distance near the road. He tripped and hit his head on a rock. Despite my condition, I knew I needed to stop and give him some help. But as I saw him, I realized he was wearing the same clothes I wore yesterday. I got out to ask if he's okay, but he didn't move. As I got closer, he grabbed my hand and looked at me. He had wide eyes and a huge terrifying smile. I was more scared than I liked to admit. I quickly got in my car and drove away. I managed to get home by sunset and it took me a few minutes to get the balls to run to my front door. I have no return to the lake. And his smile haunted me ever since.